Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. Now, in a previous video, we looked at one of these absolutely tiny little FM bug transmitters. And I tested it mainly just to sort of see what range I could sort of get out of it, just using a sort of two of these very small sort of button cells here. And it was quite astonishing because even with a very short sort of length of wire, this is just under one meter, um, I was able to get almost well actually over 100 meters <laughs> 100 meters just out of this little bug there it was sort of quite worrying really wasn't it espionage from the sort of 70s if you like so yeah i was pretty impressed with that and uh, so i went back on uh, ebay and i thought well you know if i sort of spend a little bit more money because this was incredibly cheap so i spent another couple of pounds more and uh, yeah i've got another one in to test and uh, this one is sort of slightly bigger in its uh, sort of construction it's got a bigger condenser microphone on it so i'm hoping that it's going to sort of pick up some louder sounds because my only sort of criticism of that first little one was that it might have could have been just that little bit uh, sort of louder so here is the uh, the new bug if you like it's it's quite a bit bigger it's probably twice the size of the uh, the old one but uh, in this video we're going to sort of set it up i'm going to solder on the battery connections and the antenna and uh, then i'm going to sort of use it more in a sort of uh, surveillance situation we're going to put it inside something i'm going to find something that it, it will fit into and i'm going to not so much sort of test the range as it were trying to get the maximum range out of it but uh, we're going to sort of see if it would work as a real bug because as i said before you know this is a sort of technology way back in the sort of cold war in sort of maybe the sort of 1970s early 80s this sort of thing would have been uh, sort of cutting edge technology and of course nowadays we can pick it up for a few pounds just a few dollars on ebay so that's what we're going to be doing in this video so first thing i need to do is work out where the uh, connections are get my soldering iron out and then put on the uh, the wire connections and then there is a tiny little uh, pot adjustment there as you can sort of see a little sort of screw there and get my micro screwdrivers out and i'm going to adjust it again and see, if, see what sort of frequency that i can sort of get it to work on again it's in the fm band which thanks for people pointing out in the last video by the way the, F, the broadcast band 87.5 i think i said 88 but 87.5 up to 108 so we we'll try and find a nice sort of clear kind of uh, gap in those frequencies where there are no sort of broadcasting stations and then we'll do a test we'll sort of test to sort of see how well it works so anyway gonna crack on with that cheers thanks for watching the wires connected and uh, the the antenna do you use a very smaller section of wire for the antenna this time because so we're not really going for distance going more for concealment right so next bit of this stage it was just, it's the same as before um, just using the Texan PL600 this is a uh, synthesized um, receiver here very nice radio actually it does does short wave as well as uh, medium wave, long wave and FM and also it's got sideband on it as well but doesn't cover 11 meters I know someone asked that question so as before we're going to switch it on hopefully it's going to work and then all we're going to do is turn up the volume because we'll get obviously a lot of acoustic feedback with the speaker and the microphone being so close together and then we're going to just start a flick through and hopefully we'll pick it up It's Radio 4. Oh, wow. There it is. Sorry. Sorry if you're wearing headphones. So that's at 96 megahertz, which is right by Capital Radio, 95.8. So I'm going to need to adjust that just for that little tiny uh, pot in there. I'm just going to sort of adjust that and try and get that on a section of broadcast band where it's not close to a broadcasting radio station so i'm not i'll just do that off camera and then i'll get back to you okay we're back um i've got it up, up about on about 107 megahertz it is quite sort of splattery across the band it's uh, not very filtered so it comes in uh, just below that There we go. So coming in at about 107. Hopefully that's uh, not near any radio stations. Oh, 
makes an awful noise, doesn't it? So there you go, that's tuned in at 107 megahertz. So the next thing now is just to sort of uh, find something that I could sort of conceal this in as if it was gonna be used in a sort of spy bug situation. Um, it's quite big, it's much bigger than the, uh, the sort of first one, which is obviously was uh, a lot smaller. So it does sort of limit what I can sort of put it in, but uh, I'm gonna look, look around the, uh, the household and see if I can find a household object that I could conceal this little spy bug in and then we'll do some experimentation. What I've come up with is a little sort of uh, bottle here, if you like, of table salt, sort of thing that you might find, you know, in a kitchen, sort of cafeteria, something like that. So I should be able just to fit all of this inside. I say with the shorter antenna wire, that should uncoil, hopefully. A little bit tricky there. There we go. So that will all fit inside and then just secure this sort of with a little bit of tape there just inside the lip. And then conveniently, the uh, sort of cap has a little opening there that I can put right on sort of by the microphone there. So uh, that will be also sort of slightly directional as well. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fit that inside and then we'll sort of set it up in sort of um, a kind of spy environment. Let's do a little bit of role playing. Let's have a bit of fun. So we imagine the situation back in the 1970s when maybe the uh, sort of the police were trying to catch a criminal. So we'll set that up and then we'll do some testing. This is gonna be the setup. Um, just try and imagine this is like a little sort of greasy spoon calf or oh, if, if, you're, if you're American, you're watching a diner. So, you know, this would be a, an old, a full English sort of uh, fry up, double egg sort of hash brown sausage bacon. But in this case, the, uh, the villain is sort of quite health conscious. So he's got his two plums and his banana. So the bug itself is hidden in the uh, salt, salt pot there at the back of behind the old Tommy and the brown sauce. And just imagine it, you know, you know we're a role play, you've got a copper maybe sort of uh, got this kind of villain, talked him into coming into the greasy spoon sort of cafeteria, you know, and he's got the place bugged. And outside would be the old Sweeney Todd, the old flying squad um, police officers. And uh, they're, yeah, they'd be in the old tranny van there with the reel to reels going, recording it. You know, and a copper would be in a cafe and it would be, come on Mickey, you might as well admit that you did that fire in that warehouse. And old Mickey would be, well, just between me and you copper, yeah, me and the lads, we did torch that gaff, that warehouse down by the docks. But you won't get me copper, we wiped that clean. And then, you know, in the transit van, the old governor, the old sort of inspector would say, right, we've got him PC, nick him. And it all steam in and nick the guy. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just getting totally lost in fantasy. Right, this is the test. Um, we're gonna use the radio here, the, the old bush radio. Just gonna use that to uh, transmit to the hidden sort of bug. And then we'll take the, uh, the Texan and we'll sort of see if it works. We'll see what sort of range we get and hopefully we'll get a little bit better clarity than we did on the last bug be, being a bit bigger. But uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's cut all this crap and let's get down to it. Well, unfortunately, we're out in the garden here and uh, yeah, we've got another powerful F FM broadcast radio station at 106.3. So, we're going to have to go back in and retune the bug and find a clear frequency and then carry on. Right, I've got it, I've retuned down to 99.4, but uh, with that shorter little antenna inside the salt bottle, it's a lot more susceptible to interference. There it is. But it's very, very narrow banded if you move the, uh, the radio around there. So it is working, but uh, not sure on the distance. We're going to go to the end of the garden. Right, here at the end of the garden. And pretty much lost it. Yeah, I need to get closer. So it hasn't got the range without that uh, long one metre antenna. Yeah, in the next room, if you was in the next room, it works It works incredibly well. But see, it has got limited range. Works better inside the house. In, in conclusion, um, it worked okay. It certainly, it certainly worked, but the range was very limited. I suppose it's no surprise, is it, really, when you think about the sort of length of the antenna, you know, a, a metre antenna 
compared to a very very small piece of wire stuffed into a, uh, a salt, salt pot there. Um, yeah, I mean overall it was okay. I, I, I did find that little, tight, little pot there quite sort of very very tricky to tune. In actual fact, although it's smaller, I found the first one um, was easier to tune. The sort of pot seemed to have quite a wider range to it. This one was very very sort of sensitive. But there you go, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? These little bugs, little FM bugs that, to so say, you can buy these on eBay. Um, the, the links do change over time. But I will leave a link to this one at uh, my seller. But as I say, if you, do, if you do a search, you can pick these up, you know, quite, quite sort of uh, cheaply. And uh, you can always run a bit more power through it. Obviously, I'm running two, uh, two sort of uh, one, two, it's three volt cells, uh, but I think this is down to about five volts now. And you can, you can go up to about nine volts on these, which will increase, increase the power. But I think the main thing is the length of antenna. The longer the antenna you can sort of uh, get on this, and especially if you can get it in a sort of vertical kind of uh, position there as well, that, that sort of helps. So it's, it's generally, I think, down to sort of the antenna. But there you go, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Another little uh, sort of spy bug. Um, I'll leave a link to this smaller one that I did earlier. I'll leave that at the end. That will come up a little card in a second at the end there. Um, please give the video the old uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you've not already done so, I would appreciate it if you'd consider giving me a subscription. That's always uh, most welcome. But as for now, I'd like to say cheers. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your view time. Stay safe. And of course, I'll catch you all on the next one. Bye now. <laughs>